Indigenous poultry farming is important in Kenya for improved livelihoods because it contributes to food security, has low startup costs, is practiced by women, youth and men, and requires little land and labor. Thus the enterprise is accessible to every farmer. Indigenous chicken is tasty, organic and fetches higher prices in the markets. In Kenya, the demand for indigenous chicken far outstrips supply. Customers being here, Kanado, Yamangala, my to my son, Okonimen, the Gran, Gokosiaki, Kamba, Ilatusi, San Gokosiaki, and Yed. Most of my customers prefer the indigenous chicken. Most people do not like the exotic chicken or broilers. What is mostly on demand is the indigenous chicken. For any farmer who keeps them, this is what we want very much. We would very much like to promote such farmers. If we keep indigenous poultry, just bring it to us and we will buy. Even though poultry farming is a lucrative business, marketing is still informal. The sector has been affected by numerous challenges such as unreliable supply of poultry products, poor access to extension services, high mortality rates due to diseases such as Newcastle disease, deaths during transportation, disorganized marketing systems, high costs of feeding and poor breeding. Therefore, unless farmers understand these intricacies, they end up making losses. At the same time, farmers need to keep many birds to be profitable. In this video, we will learn how farmers can sustainably address challenges facing production and marketing of indigenous chicken through farmer groups and be able to run profitable enterprises. Poultry farmer groups should invest in promoting good production and marketing practices such as hatchery equipment like egg hatchers, better housing, better feeding, better health management and collective marketing in order to improve yields thus increase incomes from poultry. When farmers come together to collectively sell their poultry products, they need to understand how to lower costs of rearing chicken and introducing weighing instead of current estimation. Thus, when a farmer sells using price per kilo, they get rewarded for their effort. Weighing is the best way to facilitate collective marketing and enhance production. Farmer groups help their farmers to build sustainable poultry housing that is safe and safeguard their birds from predators, thieves and harsh weather that may cause diseases and losses. In many cases, farmers share their houses with chicken. This should not be the case. <laughs> Since the time I transferred my chicken from the kitchen and constructed a house for them to sleep, I have benefited immensely from increased eggs. When the chicken used to sleep in the kitchen, I incurred great losses like, for example, many eggs were broken by predators and I could not do anything about it. But now after constructing the poultry house, I am getting more eggs which has benefited me. The housing structure for chicken should be well ventilated to allow proper air circulation. In this case, one side of the walls should be constructed using wire mesh. A farmer can choose to pour sawdust onto the floor of the chicken house or can use the raised system. The deep litter system absorbs moisture and ensures the floor is not too cold for the chicken while the raised system can accommodate a large number of birds and collects chicken dropping under the chicken housing which makes good manure. Maintain proper hygiene in the chicken house. 
After providing a clean and hygienic environment, routine preventive measures form the next line of defense against diseases. The reason for vaccinating our poultry is to control and minimize disease like viral infections as prevention is better than cure. You are supposed to vaccinate chicks after hatching, that is, after three days up to five days, the reason being that they can be infected from even drinking water. If you have a large flock of birds, you can vaccinate them through drinking water. If you have many chicks to be vaccinated, divide the chicks into groups of 20 to ensure none is missed. For adult poultry, at the time of the beginning of the rains, we have disease outbreak like fall typhoid, which kills poultry in large numbers. It is important to ensure your flock is vaccinated. There is also a disease known as gumboro, which is a threat in the month of June. So make sure your poultry are vaccinated, then repeat after every three months. Due to lack of training, many individual farmers have suffered heavy losses from high mortality rates due to diseases such as Newcastle, Gumboro, among others. Farmer groups should ensure their farmers undergo continuous training on preventive measures which include vaccination and parasite control. Farmers should follow the recommended vaccination program to minimize losses. Birds that have access to pastures and outdoor areas will have greater exposure to internal and external parasites. Poultry should be regularly inspected for external parasites and pesticides should be sprinkled in the shed, patches and nest thoroughly, making sure it gets into cracks and crevices. In many rural setups, chickens are reared on free-range systems and left to look for food on their own. Often, chickens are fed with food leftovers. Deliberate flock feeding is rare and where available, it is not planned for. Watering of chicken is not generally planned for except when the farmer places some herbs in water for medication purposes. Many farmers in arid and semi-arid areas lack enough food to feed their families from the farms and therefore are not in a position to reserve or afford feed for their chicken. But supplementing chicken feed in a free-range system does not have to be an expensive affair. <laughs> When feeding my birds, I use mainly maize. I also go to the farm to pick a few leaves of kales or spinach. I also feed my poultry with leftovers like ugali or any other kitchen waste. Within my farm, I have set aside an area where I catch termites and worms for my chicken. I use grass to entice the termites. First, I wet the place to allow termites to come out in search of the dry grass. I also get chaffa grub to feed my poultry as well. After taking care of production of quality products, the farmer group are assured of a market. 
there are numerous places where farmers can sell their poultry products collectively. Places like retail stores, restaurants, hotels, schools and even events have huge demand and are willing to pay higher prices to get safe and quality products. The buyers in this category buy in big quantities at a premium price, though they demand consistency in supply, quality and safety of products. The chicken that we buy is from one and a half kilos and above. We like buying them from a client who has a chicken all the time, and we normally buy between 10 and 50 chicken. We have a place where we keep them after slaughtering, so if we have them in large numbers, it is usually helpful to us because we just slaughter and keep them. Now, let us look at what we have learned to improve your income from your chicken. Poultry farming is highly profitable business because if farmer groups invest heavily in promoting better housing, better feeding, better health management and collective marketing in order to improve yields, thus increase incomes from poultry. Farmer groups can help farmers address challenges facing production and marketing of indigenous chicken. I keep broilers of which I sell a kilo at 400 shillings. I also keep cocks for breeding which I sell at 4 months for 800 shillings and when it is 5 months 1000 shillings. I also keep chicks like one day old which I sell for 100 shillings. I also sell eggs for brooding at 30 shillings and for consumption at 10 shillings. I'm very happy keeping poultry. It gives me high returns. I'm not going to be able to do it.